Hey you, yeah you, aren't you sick of this? I mean, don't you want more for your life? You're obviously not staying here for the money. That raise you got, that didn't even cover inflation. But don't worry, don't stress yourself out. There is a way out of this. I've made over $750,000 freelancing on a website called Upwork. And today, I'm gonna teach you everything I know about making money on Upwork so you can stop living paycheck to paycheck and finally, you know, maybe escape this place. That sounds good to you? It does? Okay, great, let's go ahead and get started. This isn't one of those boring tutorials on YouTube where you need five cups of coffee and a slap in the face to stay awake for. I've made this entire process into a video game with five levels, and after completing each level, you will earn an achievement. Well, look at that. You just earned your first achievement, Freelance Beginner. Okay, so the very first thing you need to do is find a freelance skill that has demand on Upwork, it's high paying, and most importantly, you actually enjoy doing it. Some days, you're not going to feel like doing anything because, hey, I mean, you're not a robot. But it's important that most days, you really enjoy the work you're doing. I mean, you only get one life, so why waste it doing something that doesn't make you happy? And if you have no idea what you want to do with your life, don't worry, I've got you. I'm going to show you a great way that you can choose a freelance skill. Okay, first I recommend taking a look at this job category in the descriptions page on Upwork and I'll throw a link to this page down below in the description for you. I personally love this because it shows all the main job categories and you can expand them to see all the individual skills and descriptions as well. For example, if you expand IT and networking, then you will see database administration, which is my main freelance skill. I recommend that you go through these and write down all the freelance skills that interest you. Okay, so do you have some skills written down now? You do? That's perfect. Now you need to identify the earning potential for each skill. I mean, what's the point of investing tons of time into learning a skill if it doesn't pay well? Here's exactly what I did when I had zero jobs and zero dollars earned as a freelancer, just like a lot of you. So go to Upwork, change the drop down to talent, type in that first skill you wrote down, and then smash enter on your keyboard. In this example, we're looking for the top earning video editors on Upwork, so now we need to apply some filters so we can find them. Under talent type, select freelancers, leave the rate as default for now. For job success score, definitely use 90% and up. Select $10,000 and more for the earned amount, and I usually select a thousand plus hours build as well. You can also play around with advanced search when you're searching for specific keywords and titles. But now our goal is to find the highest earning video editor freelancers on Upwork. Now to do this, I went through the first 10 pages and saved two of the highest earning profiles so I can come back to them and reference them at any time I want. The first freelancer has made over $400,000 on Upwork and the second freelancer has made over $100,000. There were so many video editors with six figure earnings on Upwork, like pages of them. And that's exactly what you need to be looking for skills that are in high demand and they also pay very well. So now you need to repeat these steps for the rest of the skills you wrote down and compare the results. When choosing a freelance skill, look for a great combination of demand, earning potential, and skill enjoyment. And if this is a new skill that you don't have yet, then again, don't worry baby, I've got you. Skillshare, Datacamp, and Pluralsight are all gonna help you get started completely for free. Just be sure to use my links down below in the description. So did you choose a freelance skill? You did? Okay, well, you just earned the freelance skilled achievement. We are now ready. I'm so sorry, please give me one second. I think there's a delivery at my door. Yes, let's go, baby. It's finally here. Wow. I can't believe this iPhone is pre-owned. It honestly looks brand new. So I've been wanting to upgrade my old iPhone for a while now, but I've been putting it off due to the insane prices. Thanks to Swap Club's iPhone swap, I was able to upgrade my old iPhone for a certified pre-owned iPhone 13. The shipping was free, it comes with a 90 day warranty, and it was the best price that I could find for an iPhone upgrade at up to 70% cheaper than retail. They even let you keep your current iPhone until you receive the swap iPhone so you don't have to go a day without a phone. So after you receive the renewed iPhone and transfer your data, all you have to do is wipe your old iPhone and send it back to them in the same box using a prepaid label. The Swap Club will then repair your old iPhone and find it a new home with another customer, which I personally really like because it gives my old device a new life in the circular economy. It's also important to note that the iPhone swap is not a battery replacement service and they do not sell iPhones. However, their pre-owned iPhones are guaranteed to have an 80% or better battery life. So if you're looking for a simpler and cheaper way to upgrade your iPhone, then click on the link in the description box below to get started. We are now ready to advance to level two, build a portfolio. So before you create an Upwork profile, you really need at least three to five 
examples of your work. In fact, the two most important parts of your entire Upwork profile are your client reviews and examples of your work. If you're a new freelancer and you don't have any reviews or feedback yet, then you need to focus heavily on your portfolio. To win jobs on Upwork, clients need to know that you can deliver what they need. So you may be thinking, this sounds great, but I have no idea what to use as a work example. And I completely understand that. That's why in level one, you found two of the top earning freelancer profiles for your skill. Go to their profiles on Upwork and study everything about their portfolios. Look at their title, thumbnail, tags, and description. Okay, let's take a look at the portfolio for one of the highest earning video editor freelancers that I found. So right away, they have a bunch of portfolio items. So when a client comes to their profile and views it, what do you think they wanna see? They wanna see examples of videos the freelancer has edited. They wanna see the editing style, the quality, and results they've generated for other clients. The first portfolio item here is a great example of what you need to strive for. The first thing that grabs my attention is definitely the thumbnail. They were able to help a YouTube channel gain over 1 million views and even placed a red circle around the view count. The title is also great, Skyrocketing an Influencer's YouTube Channel. The images and videos are great because it directly shows the results they were able to get this client. You really need to focus on the client's needs and showcase what you can do for them. They also use relevant keywords, which is important for boosting your profile in the Upwork search algorithm. The same thing applies for the project description as well. It highlights on the results and also hits home on keywords that will help this free freelancer rank higher in Upwork search. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. You can get so much inspiration from the most successful freelancers on Upwork. What they're doing is obviously working and it can for you as well. Be sure to place the best examples of your work front and center that are most relevant to the types of projects that you're trying to win. And on that note, you just earned your next achievement go to portfolio. Now that you have great examples of your work ready to go, it's time to create a winning Upwork profile. Let's start with the most critical and visible parts of your Upwork profile, which are your headshot, title, and description. So why are these the most important? It's because they show up in Upwork search results. When a client is browsing through search results, you honestly only have a few seconds to grab their attention. If they don't click on you, you don't win any jobs, and you certainly don't make any money. Starting with the headshot, just keep things simple and get inspiration from other freelancers. Make sure that you have good lighting, keep the background plain and simple, smile, and make sure that it's a zoomed in headshot. You really only want to include your head and the tops of your shoulders. Moving on to your title, now this can really make or break you. You want to stand out, but you also want to keep it simple because the ideal length for your title is around 10 words or less. First, think about what you want to rank for in search results. For a video editor, that would be video editor. Now you need to take it a step further and make it specific and unique as well. Okay, so if I wanted to create a video editor profile for myself, Here's two examples of titles that I would use. These both include keywords that I want to rank for, and they also include results I've generated and software that I use. If you're still struggling to create a title, then again, I'm going to keep repeating this. Get inspiration from other successful freelancers in your niche, but do not copy paste. Please don't. And now for the last, most visible part of your Upwork profile, let's talk about your profile description. Okay, listen closely to what I'm about to say. You need to remember this. The first one to two sentences of your description are extremely important to your success on Upwork. When a client is searching for freelancers to invite to their project, they can only see the first couple lines of your description. You need to make these powerful and honestly clickbaity. You want your profile to reach out and say, hey, look at my profile. When writing your profile description, constantly put yourself in the client's perspective. If you were hiring someone with your skill set, what would you look for? To give you some inspiration, here's my profile description. As you can see, my goal is to convince the client that I'm the best fit for them. My first two sentences include one of my best client reviews. I put tons of time into writing my description to make it attractive and also easy to read by breaking everything into sections. This is not something that you can spend five minutes writing and never update it again. You have to be constantly improving if you want to have long-term success on Upwork. The next part of your profile is the portfolio, and since you already have examples of your work from the last level, you simply need to place those in your portfolio. Again, you need at least three to five portfolio items to put yourself in the best position possible to stand out and win jobs. Next up, we have the skills section, and please do not throw a bunch of random skills in here. 
now. These are way more important than you think, and they actually help with your profile SEO. Okay, so here's a pro tip. If you still have no idea what skills to add, go to Upwork and then search for jobs related to your skill. So for example, let's search for video editor. Under every job, you can see the required skills. These are skills added by the client saying, hey, I need freelancers with these skills. I can tell you I don't have money, but what I do have are a very particular set of skills. I recommend that you spend some time going through the results and writing down the skills that appear most often. Okay, do you remember when I said the two most important parts of your profile are client reviews and examples of your work? If so, then you're probably thinking, how am I supposed to have client reviews when I've never completed a job? At this point, I don't know why I have to keep saying this, but don't worry, I've got you. The next part of your profile is testimonials, which allows you to add reviews from people outside of Upwork. All you have to do is complete this simple form, asking them to leave you a testimonial, and when you hit request testimonial, it sends them an email. You need to send these to people that you know 100% will leave you a great review. And this profile here is a great example of how you can use testimonials to help you win jobs on Upwork. So those are the main sections of your profile that will help you rise above other freelancers. And now you're finished putting tons of time and tons of effort into building a winning profile, right? You are? Okay, well, you just earned your next achievement winning Upwork profile. So you have a freelance skill, you have great examples of your work, you built a winning Upwork profile, and now you're ready to start finding jobs. Now this may surprise you, but most new freelancers don't actually know how to find the right jobs on Upwork. Whoa, that's a genuinely shocking fact. So to prevent you from being a victim of this as well, I'm going to show you the exact process that I use to find the best jobs on Upwork. So for this job, the title, description, and skill level all look great to me. If you're new to Upwork, then I would definitely recommend focusing on intermediate level jobs until you start completing jobs and earning some five-star reviews. I personally completed around three intermediate level jobs before moving to Expert. The expectations will be lower and it will help you start building your confidence before you move to expert level jobs. Next, I'll look at how many hours are estimated for the job. If it requires more than 30 hours per week, then with my current schedule, there's no way that I can accommodate that. This job is less than 30, so that gets a check mark for me. I don't really care about the project length or the estimated hourly rate, because both of these are typically not accurate. The client usually doesn't know what to use here, so I just ignore them. This client is payment verified, which is something else that I look for. And now we can take a look at the reviews and feedback that they're receiving from freelancers and leaving freelancers. Okay, this is extremely important, so come here, listen closely. Remember how I said the two most important parts of your Upwork profile are client reviews and examples of your work? If the client has any history on Upwork, then you need to look at the reviews. So for this client, it looks like they've received all five star reviews from freelancers. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. This client has a great track record of leaving five star reviews and positive feedback. So odds are if I win this job and I do a great job on it, then I'll get a five star review. Now, as you can see, this job has a bunch of questions and I typically don't like these because of all the time it takes to fill them out. However, if I was a new freelancer, then I would still submit a proposal. And be sure to answer the questions very well. If a job has questions like this, they appear above your cover letter and everything else, so they're very important. And under activity, you can see that 10 to 15 proposals have been submitted. For the most part, the less proposals submitted, the better chance you have of being noticed. However, if you find a job and it has maybe 20 plus proposals submitted, but the job aligns very well with your skills and experience, then personally, I would still submit a proposal. For last viewed by client, now if this is getting close to a month, then I would personally stay away because jobs on Upwork automatically get archived if they haven't had any activity for a month. However, for this job, it's 10 hours ago, so we're good here. And you can see they sent 11 invites to freelancers. Now, this means they already have a list of freelancers who they want to hire, and it's a little high for me. Ideally, you want this to be three or less. So for all the job details and everything about this job, that's the only thing that I have an issue with. But with that being said, if I really needed a job or I was a new freelancer, then I would still go ahead and submit a proposal because everything else looks great. Now, if you apply this same process when analyzing jobs on Upwork, then you will be ahead of 99% of freelancers who don't take the time to do this. If you're doing the same thing as everyone else, then you'll never be in the 1%. Go the extra mile, do the extra work. I promise it's worth it. So congrats, you just earned your next achievement job research expert now that you know how to find the best jobs it's time to write cover letters that capture the client's attention now this section deserves a full dedicated video and i have one of those and you can find it um right there so let's take a look at one that made me over fifty-five thousand dollars 
and I'll give you some expert vetted tips to help you write better cover letters. First, you need to capture the client's attention in your first sentence. Just like your profile description, the first one to two sentences of your cover letter is what the client sees first. Now this is very important because if the first sentence of your cover letter does not capture their attention, the rest of it doesn't matter. It's useless because they'll never see it. So most freelancers start their cover letters with a generic, Hi, my name is Josh Burns. I have this many years of experience as blah, blah, blah. Don't do that. Or they come out in full desperation mode and beg for a job. One way that you can stand out is by using the client's name, which you can easily find if they have reviews from other freelancers. Then jump directly into the client's issue or problem. Mention or restate the problem and then give an example of your work that directly relates to their project. Now you can tell the client a little bit about yourself, but please keep it short. Now I want you to write something down real quick. Are you ready? Respect the client's time. Next, I usually tell the client what I can bring to their project and these are not copied and pasted into every proposal. I customize these based on the job description and you should as well. And most importantly, include a call to action. Now, I put mine at the end of my cover letter and basically just ask the client to schedule a quick 10 minute introduction call with me. And this works great because almost every time after a client agrees to the call, I get offered the job. And with that being said, you just earned the ultra rare against all odds achievement. I mean, look at that. That's one to be proud of. At the end of the day, you could follow every tip from this video and still struggle to make money on Upwork. So why is that? It's because I can't do the work for you. You have to put in the time and you have to put in the work that's required to become a successful freelancer. You may not be the smartest person or even the most naturally talented, but you can always outwork the competition. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.